Bad Brad Berkwood. This is Gordon Depp. And we welcome you to our show, Last Stop, The Twilight Zone. Still one of the coolest guitar riffs ever. It is definitely the coolest guitar riffs ever. Well, hey, folks, this is our debut show, and we both want to welcome you, give you a little bit of an uh, idea of what to expect. We're going to be doing reviews of the Twilight Zone from the very first one to the last one. We're going to have on guests. Uh, if we have a Twilight Zone episode when we're out and about in this day of COVID-19, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about merchandise and, and all kinds of stuff, but everything is always going to be around the Twilight Zone. Uh, both Gordon and I are obviously huge fans. You see us wearing the shirt. He has his shirt on too. There you go. You can see it. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we're two uh, men in, in our 50s and, and older that are still Twilight Zone fans. We grew up on the show, lifelong fans. But not only are we uh, fans of the show, we admire Rod Sterling as a human being and for his contributions to humanity that to this very day still hold up. So with that said, we're going to start at the beginning of the Twilight Zone and we're going to discuss today the very first episode called Where Is Everybody? It aired on October 2nd, 1959, and the two main stars were Earl Holloman and James Gregory. It was written by Rod Serling, and it was directed by Robert Stevens. Now, at this point, I'm going to turn it back over to Gord. Well, 1959, the year I was born. How was that? There you go. No wonder my, my imagination was so twisted by these shows. Still, in, in music and everything, probably the series that influenced me more than anything else growing up as a kid. And the, the first episode, I have to say, is still one of my favorites, you know? And what, what a way to, to kick off the show. The, the, the audiences in America must have been blown away because it went right in. It didn't go in subtly. It went in with a really strange concept. Um, and yeah, as you'll find out, but the reason it's one of my favorites because I have a real soft spot for any episode to deal with sort of abandoned towns and cities like the end of the world where there's one or two people trying to find their way and you don't know what's real or not real and that goes in tv shows now like walking dead have that uh, i am legend you know when things are abandoned and that's thing so whenever you get to a show like that i'm in so that's uh, one thing about this show and I, I i believe that if you watch the show there are so many little things i gotta believe that a young say stephen king would have gotten ideas and germs for ideas you yeah. know because you know, like the whole thing about walking into a room and there's just, there's a cigar still smoldering in the, in the, in the ashtray, or the coffee's still brewing, but there's nobody there. Like everybody just disappeared. Right. Um, or abandoned movie theater, you know, nobody walks in, nobody's there, all of a sudden the movie starts rolling. I mean, yeah. those, those things as a, you know, as filmmakers and writers like Stephen King, I'm sure they watched those like we did and then never forgot those things and incorporated them in their, in their work. Um, another cool thing in this soundtrack, oh my God, that riff right there, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, behind me I have a little cabinet or door like in the opening sequence. I got to put things in there that relate to the episode. I got, there's a clock here. You'll see in this episode, there's time has something to do with it. It's a broken yeah. clock. Oh, the moving projector right here somewhere. And Alfred Hitchcock. There you go. Getting back to the soundtrack was done by one of the greatest composers of all time, is, I think, is Bernard Her Herman. Mm -hmm. You know, he did Psycho. You know, like Jason the Argonauts, the, the Sinbad movies, very dramatic and um, brilliant. So I, I love it for just that itself, you know, as, as a musician. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's got funny things in it that are, you know, acting wise and they're, they're sort of finding their way. But to me, it's still one of my favorites because not only does it start off the show with a bang, but it goes into that comfort zone for me where everything's abandoned, you know, things are almost like living in a world of props, you right. know. So you so open the door, there's nothing there. At what point in the episode did you see the ending coming at all? The ending? Figure it out? No, not at all. Like that ending was, I mean, even now, that's what I love about the series. Still watching it now, I still get psyched out a little because, you know, it is still a, a shocker. And I can't imagine back then the first viewing, people must have been like, you know, right. <laughs> it's quite the twist. And I love I me, mean, I think Rod Stewart liked to sort of, be sort of warning about future technology, science, you know, all that stuff. He sort of, he, I think he was sort of a rebel, you know, so I think he showed his sort of disdain for some of the things that the government was doing and, and to people as, as pawns and, and games and things like that. Right. And um, 
definitely explores that in this episode a little bit and the twist at the end. And, and we're not going to give it away, are we? Not, yeah, we shouldn't, right? <laughs> yeah, we, we will. We, we will. Could. We can. Yeah. Well, with your likes and, and your dislikes, or you didn't you'd have any dislikes in this particular episode. No. Uh, I got to be honest. When I first saw it, I wasn't really a fan of it. But I rewatched it last night, all these years later, and with Deb. And the first thing that Deb and I looked at each other and said, Earl Holloman was very believable. He was a very good actor. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, he basically was the whole show. I mean, till, till yep. the end. So he was very believable. The things that you talked about, uh, the smoldering cigar and, and stuff like that, you know, Last Man on Earth, which we know in one episode, or not episode, one part of the episode, he turns the thing around and the book is The Last Man on Earth. He can't remember who he is. The biggest thing that, that turned me around, besides what I thought his acting was great, was that you couldn't figure out the ending. Even though I knew the ending because I had seen it before, but looking at it with fresh eyes again, if it would have been the first time, I wouldn't have saw that twist. And I'm always a no. fan of a movie or a TV show when you can't figure it out. Because that, to me, that's brilliant writing. So Absolutely. I, I understand why you like it. And I, I want to also mention, when you wrote like um, Nova Heart, and you had like architects of the world and, and we're coming to your town. That stuff was based off of the Twilight Zone, right? Some of it? Well, just the way of thinking, you know, right, sort of right. anti-establishment, uh, right. sort of, you know, that kind of thing. And there's things beyond, you know, the, the shadows that most people don't really know about that behind the, the props and, and they sort of run things, sort of like Wizard of Oz sort of, sort of thing. And what he, I, I love in everything that Rod did, he keeps the human element really strong. Like, He's like just a regular Joe, you know, he's running around and talking like, you know, like regular ordinary American guy, right? But he's in a really un, like extraordinary situation that makes him more believable. So if they'd have played it straight as just size fi and, you know, he just freaked out. But he's like the regular guy, he makes himself a, a Sunday at one point at the, uh, at the um, I think it was the pharmacy back then, right? You get the soda shop, right? Yeah, yeah. And doing these ordinary things. I, I, I remember taking a screenwriting course in, for a while when I went and, and the, the teacher talked about that. It feels like alien. Like when they sit around, talk about everyday things, like, right. you know, the coffee and the meal, and they need a, they need a raise and stuff, which is normal, you know, for science fiction. At least it wasn't then. So mm -hmm. when the strange things come into the pictures, oh my God, you're invading my real world. So it's not a, a fantasy, everything's fantasy. You know, it's, it's a bunch of normal people. Like in this, he's just an every, everyday guy thrown into a very strange situation. And it makes it so much more believable to me. Okay, and I'm gonna do a spoiler alert. So the ending, he finds out that he was in the Air Force and it was an experiment. And yeah. he basically it is gonna to go to the moon and they wanna talk about isolation and being alone. And Rod Serling took it from a standpoint of how, would it, how will it affect you? They had him in a box for, what was it? 400 and I forget how many hours. It was mm. like two weeks time. And at the end, they, he, he's hitting his button and where Gord mentioned the clock, He's hitting his hand. It's a little in the wall of this yeah. box that he's in because they got probes hooked up to his chest and his head. And he's tapping the thing and he's broken the glass and they pull him out. So that's the synopsis of the show. That's Gord's uh, likes. Sometimes we're going to have dislikes. Yeah. This one for him was all likes. And I actually agree with all the likes that he has. So let's do some trivia and facts. And let's see if I can get Gord. I want to see if he can surprise okay. me. <laughs> okay. Well, one point I want to make is, this is more of a fact, believe it or not, Earl Holloman is one of the few stars that is still alive. He's 92 years old. He's born wow. in 1928, and he's still alive. I did some research on him. He hasn't acted since 2000, but he mm -hmm. is still alive. Now, fact about um, Earl Holloman, see if you remember this, Gord. He would go on to play in a highly popular 1970s show from 74 to 78, with the very attractive Angie Dickinson. Angie Dickinson, yes. Who was Pepper, that was a nickname, <laughs> on Police Woman. He was Lieutenant, uh -huh. he was Lieutenant uh, Bill Crawley, and that was a very popular show in the 70s. Very cool. Now, an interesting tie-in. Did you know, Gord, that when he goes into the theater, do you remember who was on the billboard and what movie? Yeah, I do, because I was going to ask you that, too. Okay. Well, who Batman. was it? Who was it? Oh, not the Marquis. But in oh, when you go in, the, the, the name of the movie, What's the movie? Battle Him. It's and who was in it? Was it Rock Hudson on there? It was Rock Hudson and Mark the Hire, which is a movie from 1957. But here's an interesting fact.
that ties them in. And Rod might have done this or he might not have. Yeah. That episode aired in 1959. In 1956, Earl Holloman co-starred with Rock Hudson in the movie classic Giant with James Dean. Did you know that? Uh-huh. Yeah, I remember that, yeah. Okay. And Earl Holloman was one of the smaller mm-hmm. actors, but he was in that movie. So there's a tie-in with Rock Hudson. Now, James... Which we'll see through this whole series, I, I found out. What's that? The little thre- you, as we will see through this whole series, there are little threads yes. between actors and directors and themes that he sometimes jump episodes with when they have several in a row. And we'll, we'll see that when it happens. But yep. Now, James Gregory is the other big name that was in. He played the Air Force General. Do you remember what 70s TV show he was on? Uh, it, was, it was a cop show, wasn't it? Yes, it was. I, it, 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 was uh, it wasn't like Dragnet or something like that. It was, oh, that's uh, the right. 60s. Yeah. But you're, but you're right. It was a comedy, and I actually interviewed recently on my show uh, a couple months ago, Hal Linden, who played the lead, Barney Miller. Uh-huh. And James Gregory was Inspector Luger, and he was always coming to the station and just off the wall, really, today, not PC type of stuff. Yeah, and yeah. Look at him. And Hal Linden actually told me that he was a really nice guy and that he was like an actor's actor. He took, he took acting very seriously. I remember his, he's a real character actor. I remember seeing him, I think, the uh, in like Flint movies, I think, wasn't he in those? He was, he was uh, in, uh, no, it was the other one. Armand Flint? No, it was, that was with James Colburn. He was in uh, the one with Dean Martin, uh, yeah. Matt, uh, Matt Helm. Matt Helm movies, yeah. yeah the, Matt Helm. Yeah. Yep. He, yeah, he was the, one of the government guys or something. He was one yeah. of the government yeah. guys. He's got that look, right? He has He's that got look that about. look. He's got that look. Now, I'm going to tell you another tie-in that James Gregory has that you may or may not know with Rod Serling. Do you remember? First of all, Rod Serling wrote The Planet of the Apes. Do you know what the sequel movie was to The Planet of the Apes that came out in 1970? Re- Return to the Planet of the Apes, something like that? That, that was another one, but it was beneath, Escape from the Planet of the Apes? It was beneath, <laughs> beneath, beneath the Planet of the Apes. And James Gregory was in that movie. Now, Rod Serling didn't write that, but he did write the original Planet of the Apes in 1968. Yeah. One more fact about James Gregory and Rod Serling. You know what Rod Serling's other show that aired from 69, I think, to 74. You know what that show was? After Twilight Zone? After Twilight Zone. Uh, Night Gallery or? Night Gallery, correct. Yeah. James Gregory was on an episode called We're Stop slash stop killing me slash dead weight 1972 he played police sergeant stanley beverlo in a s- segment of it called stop killing me yeah. one other thing with james gregory was in a great movie that had kind of like a sci-fi feel to it even though mm-hmm. it, was a, it was a political thriller he was in a manchurian candidate with frank sinatra and he they actually shot and killed him in that movie that's epic was, that one wow yeah, yeah. yep so yeah, very good you got any trivia for me by chance Oh, did fact. you know? Okay, I do. I do. I thought you would know some of these. Did you know that the, the part was originally offered to Tony Curtis? No, I did not know that. Yes. But he was too big at the time, you know. He's a big sex symbol and that kind of thing. And that Earl was actually really sick during the making of this. He had like a fever of 103 or something. And you kind of see it. He's kind of sweaty. And he, he said it kind of added to his tension sometimes. You know, but he was really sick as a dog doing this thing. And I, I, you know what? Another thing I was blown away by, and I had a feeling... When I was looking at that town square, because it felt like a lot of movies, right? Mm-hmm. I said, this looks like it's been, it's so familiar. And you know what it is? From Nick of Time with Shatner. No. No. Back to the Future. Back to the oh. Future movies. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, so that's that back in the Universal back lot. And they shot they, a lot of the stuff. You can see the sort of the, the California type little hills, you know. I've, I've been to Universal and they have like the Psycho house there, you know, mm-hmm. from Psycho. Yep. Get, it has a certain look to it, sort of these little little bushes and things so that was back there um but i just investigating um earl a bit he actually tried to make suggestions to to rod about little plot things and he had one suggestion which they did not use but would have been very clever but he said that it was too weird for the for the tv station at the time because even though this is a weird subject they couldn't stray too far from science okay because at the end it makes sense right it's scientific right but what he was going to do there's a scene in the um in the um, phone booth where he's trying to call right? Yeah. And he looks through the phone booth and looks, he suggested, well, what, what about if I rip out a page and fold it up and put it in my pocket? And you forget about it. And at the very end of the thing, when you know, he's back you know, with, with the, in the laboratory or the army base and right. they take him out on a stretcher, he finds that piece of paper in his pocket. Huh. 
So, it, but that would have transcended reality. You know, it would have been like most paranormal kind of thing. Right. How could that piece of paper? Well, that was very interesting. But he said that Rod was often open to people improvising a little bit, you know, with the script where other people weren't, but um, they wouldn't stray that far <laughs> from it. it. It was cool too at the end with the moon when, he, when they're pulling him out on the stretcher and he's pointed at the moon basically saying, yeah. I'll be there soon. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so, they brother heard too said, that Rod didn't actually do narrate the first one. They put it in after. They want somebody else to be the narrator. Huh. Which is, um, that's unthinkable. That's bizarre. Right. But right. Would be, who, who, who would it be like, you know, Earl Jones or one of those big voices, you know, like, right. you know, like, uh, yeah. So a lot of cool stuff that's in these. That's what I enjoy about these. You can look at these at so many levels, right? Mm -hmm. From the music to the, to the little, you know, plot things and, and the sets. I love even the set design of those things. You know, I'm a big fan of, that genre of, this one actually is pretty elaborate. You know, this is a full town, but right. sometimes he's very minimalist and it's almost like theatrical staging of, of stuff, you know, to get the point across, especially in dream sequences and stuff. You don't need a whole thing. You can have a chair and a door and an eye or whatever, you know. So um, yeah, right away, this, this must have been something from another planet when they aired this back in 1959, you know, just, I, I cannot know. imagine, and I mean, do you know how well it did right away at the show? Do you that know? I don't know. No. I, I, oh, you're talking about as far as that episode, how it did? Well, the whole, I mean, the whole, I, you know, you know, I did kind of hear that the show did well, but it didn't do what, it wasn't like huge. It just went on to become huge. You know, when I was like, almost like a cold yeah. movie. Um, I'm not saying yeah. it bombed, but I don't, from the things that I read that it didn't do outstanding. It didn't do terrible, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't uh, like Bonanza or something like that. Yeah huge and stayed on for a very long time. Yeah, okay. those are things that are easy to understand for the family sitting around the TV set, right? It's either, you know, a Western or a cop show or a right. comedy. This is like, you know, what, what I find with Twilight Zone and what might influence my writing and stuff because it explores things that you hadn't even thought of before. Mm -hmm. You must have been so into science and technology and paranormal stuff and that stuff, but sometimes even fears that I haven't felt before. Like I said, right. oh, I didn't even know I was afraid of that. Exactly. But it's so... And those things would haunt me sometimes for days or weeks. You know, it's very, very intense and it still works now. That's an incredible thing. Now, out of curiosity, I mean, it was the year you were born. I, I came along nine years later. So uh, how old were you when you first started watching The Twilight Zone? It's, it's hard for me to say because I lived in Canada only for a year, then moved to Europe till I was like seven or eight. I'm sure it was, you know, it was long running there. I didn't see it while I was in Europe. I didn't see it until I came back. So it probably wasn't until like 67. Okay. Re you know, would it have been reruns with it? Or I'm not sure. Like, yeah, yeah. It aired from 59 yeah. to 64. So yeah, it would have been. Yeah. Ma yeah. Ma imagine Twilight Zone in Germany you know, with, with subtitles. <laughs> with some, oh my God. See, and I, I picked it up in the 70s with my dad. We used to watch it. So I used to watch it with him. All right. What I want to do is we're always going to close out and we're never going to know what each other rated yeah. but we're going to do it on a scale to one to ten we may shock each other with our, our ratings and we may not but if we do shock each other we'll discuss that a little bit and figure yeah. out why did you rate it this if we didn't address it earlier on in the show so i'm going to have you reveal your rating first all right this it's, it's a pretty generous one so yeah. Wow, interesting. Now, this is... You know, because, because of the subject matter. I mean, I right. forget about acting and the show's getting started, but it hit, hits that soft spot for me, you know, in Okay, so he's at world. seven. Well, this is interesting, folks, because you heard me say earlier that I wasn't a fan of this episode till last night when I rewatched it again. And he loves this episode. And if you didn't know, our trailer that opens up the show are like our top three favorite episodes. And obviously, you know, Earl Holloman was what this, whereas everybody was in the trailer. So this is one of Gord's top three. But I'm going to shock him. He had a seven. I wow. Got, I got an eight. I, I thought it was going to be a three or something like that. No, you were I got talking. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. Before I rewatched it, it was about a four. But when I rewatched it again, I really, really enjoyed it. Like I said, Earl Holland was a big part of it. I thought he did yeah. really well acting. But maybe because I'm older now or I, I don't know. But I took it all in uh, last night watching it again. Because we're gonna we rewatch these episodes and take our notes, and I was really really impressed with this one. And well, you know, I want to leave room too. Was yeah, that? I want to leave room because we have a lot of shows, right? So right. I gotta leave a little bit of room. I could have easily said eight, you know, because I do like it a lot. But I think they're all gonna hover around. There's no really bad ones. 
You know, like, so oh, they're all going to be up here. I, no, 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 I think there's some bad ones. Oh, you think there are bad ones? Right? Oh, yeah, yeah. I think there's some stinkers. Here, I forgot those ones. <laughs> I think there's some stinkers. All right. Any other thoughts about this episode that you like to get out before we close? Um, I like I say, this is the, the world that I feel comfortable in, the abandoned world of that I, this continues in filmmaking now and writing. You know, like I said, Stephen King and in sci-fi and horror. And just, I just watched what's the movie, The Quiet Place. I get the same feeling from that. You know, everything's deserted. Um, you know, that kind of the the world because I I I. I want to believe that I want to be one of those guys who would survive and, and make it, you know, but I feel comfortable there. I don't get scared of that. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to take this on and make it work for me, you know? So I feel comfortable in that. Me, because I was a loner as a kid watching the show. Oh, shit. Where did you go? Oh. Nope. Sorry. I just said, oh, shit. So <laughs> I may or may not be able to edit that out. So that made me pause. Oh, yeah. I thought right. I lost him. So, hey, we cursed from time to time. I said, oh, shit, because I thought I lost him. So keep going. <laughs> I slipped into the twilight zone there for a second. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. The other thing that I would add, and I, told, I said that earlier, is definitely from all the things that you talked about, but for me, uh, first and foremost, uh, something he ties in, and basically even the ones that weren't the greatest episodes for me, is this man, Rod Serling, was so ahead of his time mm. because you're talking 59 to 64, so you're talking you know, 60 plus years. 60 what is 62 years so 59 right so if you yeah. so you're older than me so they still a lot of these episodes resonate today especially mm -hmm. the humanity he talked about racism he talked about discrimination he talked mm -hmm. about other uh ways of thinking just obviously going to space other forms of life all that type of stuff they still hold up to today and I'm going to tell you, we're going to get to some episodes, I ain't going to lie. I, when I watch some of them, I still tear up. And I may yeah. even tear up when we're talking about them because they resonate. My dad passed away mm -hmm. in 98, and I watched all of these things with him, and I yeah. rewatched them with, with Debbie. Um, so your sci-fi part and, and the part about being a loner, and I'm throwing in as well the humanity part because it definitely resonates with me as oh, well there. You know, I do, I, I do like those too. And that's what I like about it. He can take you the other spectrum, like, you know, nostalgia and, yes. and talking at the heartstrings. And, and yeah, for sure, th that's the beauty of it. You know, it could be just scare the hell out of you, <laughs> make you think, but also make you cry and, and, uh, and, and, and make feel you that side of it. Yeah, it's Absolutely. great. Well, folks, that's our debut show. He's Gord Depp. I'm Bad Brad Berkwood. We want, to well, we want to thank you for coming and watching us. We encourage you to leave comments below the video. We encourage you to hit the button and subscribe to the video. Tell all your friends. Uh, and another thing that we're going to do as well, eventually as we get through uh, a couple shows, we're going to take viewers' uh, comments and questions. If you have a question for us, uh, eventually I'll give you an email address. You know, this is our debut, so we're going to get a couple reviews in first, and then we're going to just branch out to a whole bunch of things. But... Uh, He's up in Canada, and I'm in St. John, Indiana. Don't tell anybody. I'd rather be in Canada where he's at. I wish we could do a Twilight Zone thing where I could go to his side and he can come over here for a week. You need to reverse. reverse. That's a whole other episode, that one. That's another whole other episode. Yeah. So on that note, any closing thoughts? I'm looking forward to exploring this deeper than I've ever done before. Yeah, I've been a fan since I was a kid. I've watched them multiple times. There are episodes, and you must – you're telling me there's going to be stinkers, which I can't believe it. There are episodes I don't think I remember, or maybe I've never seen. So I look okay. forward to f discovering those, you know, that I may have missed for some reason, because there are a lot of, you know, like it's easy to. And there's some I've seen multiple times, so I'm right. a little biased. Yeah. Okay. All right, folks. Again, the name of our show is Last Stop, The Twilight Zone. And I'm going to put them on the spot, because we're working this out. Go grab your guitar real quick oh, and oh. riff out. It's quite the riff. It's, it, it's um, by the end of the series, I'm going to have corporal tunnel syndrome in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> it's a wacky Hitch little thing. Alfred Hitchcock is watching. He's watching right there. His would have been us. Uh, <laughs> there you go, folks. <laughs> so Gordon's going to say goodbye from... Canada, I'm going to say goodbye from yeah. St. John, and we're going to say until next time. It's been fun. Thank you. It's been great. Take care.